I'm going to kind of roll through this quickly since I know you guys are going to have another talk on this coming up, but uh, it's hard, like I said, it's kind of hard to talk about these without going through the surgery at all. These are kind of the two classic positions that we put people in for, for lumbar disc surgery. Uh, the bed on the left is an open Jackson table. That's what I use. Um, just puts the person in a relatively neutral position. Um, the table is open at the bottom, so it allows their belly to hang down, doesn't cause much compression as far as that goes. The, and that, that's an important underrated thing to consider in surgery because the belly hanging down allows all that venous blood to pull in the belly and helps your bleeding during surgery. So that's an important thing to consider. The benefit to this bed on the right, this is a bed with what we call Wilson frame. You can see this, this frame here that's kind of got them in a now flexed position, so to speak. That'll open up the inner laminar space and make it a little easier to get in there and get the disc out. Compression on the abdomen here can lead to uh, you know, more venous bleeding during surgery. So also something to consider. Um, talking about incision, you know, you, the, the number one way to, to figure out where your incision goes is to use fluoroscopy or x-ray. You can sort of use landmarks. Iliac you know, crest is kind of that L45 disc space. You can palpate the spinous process. You obviously want to be in the midline. And then the length of your incision is really dependent on how much soft tissue you need to mobilize. So bigger people, bigger incisions is really what it comes down to. I think this is a really important slide when you're thinking about disc surgery. So those lines that you're seeing there are all going right through the disc space. And you can see that the angle at which you approach the disc changes as you get to the bottom of the lumbar spine. So when you're talking about one, two, two, three, three, four, even for the most part, uh, somewhat four or five, you're talking kind of a straight down angle to the disc. When you get into that four, five, five, one, especially, that angle changes and you need to be looking more kind of from the top to the bottom, so to speak. So this is really important to consider. People will, you know, make the mistake of putting an instrument here and saying, oh, this is where my incision needs to be, but what they're actually doing is their incision is bringing them to four or five. So you have to be really careful. You wanna make sure you're going to the right level, obviously. Again, taking a look at some anatomy here. So this is a cross section through a lateral view of the spinal canal, spinous process in the back, interspinous ligament between the spinous process, supraspinous ligament running over top of the spinous processes. Ligamentum flavum here uh, underneath the uh, lamina and deep to the supraspinous ligament. Disc, vertebral body with anterior longitudinal ligament and posterior longitudinal ligament. And the, what, what I was trying to show here, this circle, that interspinous space corresponds really well with the disc space. So if you're thinking about palpation and, and landmarks for surgery, that's a good one to to consider. So again, going back to this picture I showed earlier, just going to kind of walk you through all the anatomy here. So of course, you guys know spinous process here sticking out of the back. Um, pars is, you know, between the two joints. So pars interarticularis is a really, I think, tough um, thing for people to conceptualize what this is. Every vertebral body has a superior articulating facet and an inferior articulating facet. Superior articulating facet joins up with the vertebral body above. Inferior articulating facet joins up with the vertebral body below. Important relationship, inferior articulating uh, facet corresponds with the superior articulating facet below. Um, the pars interarticularis is basically this bone in between these two joints. And that's a really, to, to be honest, even as a resident, that was a really tough concept for me to understand. The lamina is sort of joined up with that pars interarticularis. So spinous process slopes down to lamina, goes into pars interarticularis. Inferiorly, you'll find the inferior articulating process. Superiorly, superiorly you find the superior articulating process transverse process here, and the transverse process is a great landmark 
for the pedicle, which is another, of course, important landmark. So just looking at this, you know, from the back, this is obviously your view during surgery and where we're kind of trying to work. So now thinking about those nerve roots and their relationship here. So again, spinous process, lamina, pars interarticularis, facet, facet. Exiting nerve root, traversing nerve root coming down. When we talk about the classic paracentral disc herniation, we talk about uh, traversing nerve root compression. And again, you can see that picture here again. You can see where that far lateral disc herniation is going to get the dorsal root ganglion. And the paracentral disc herniation is going to get that traversing nerve root, the nerve root that's lining up to come out of the spinal canal. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.